Okay, first news topic of the week. Uh, obviously, we heard some rumblings at Gamescom. Um, we hinted at it in uh, the DF Direct that we uh, recorded there. Rumblings at Gamescom that uh, Switch 2 was basically behind the scenes being shown to developers and publishers. And um, yeah, we've now found that two publications, two European publications have broken cover and discussed some of the content that was allegedly revealed at these behind the scenes events. Uh, Eurogamer went first with a report on a demo, and I should stress it's a demo, a tech demo, uh, that allegedly showed uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild running on Switch 2. They didn't really talk about specifics of uh, what the demo was actually shown. But um, uh, a following report from Video Games Chronicle uh, doubled down on that report and basically said it was running at a higher resolution and frame rate and um, then went on to discuss the notion that a demo for The Matrix Awakens running on Unreal Engine 5 using DLSS 3.5 was also shown running on what they called quote unquote target spec hardware. Mm. Um, so with these two demos and especially The Matrix demo, imagination is running riot as to what the capabilities of these machines are because you know the the vgc article in particular is talking about raid facing being featured in uh, the unreal engine 5 demo john i'm going to go to you first on this one what do you think is the takeaway from these di disclosures and what do you think it tells us about the specifications of this hardware this feels very much like a heavily nvidia led project to me obviously the original <laughs> okay. switch uses the uh you know it, it's nvidia based right but the tagger x1 is a product they developed years before right this to me yeah, feels like before yeah yeah exactly so this to me feels like nvidia and also epic now essentially planting the flag they want to get their key technology such as dlss and ray tracing epic once lumen nanite all of this stuff to all work on nintendo's next platform they saw how big the switch was uh i don't think any of them want to see a future where if this let's say if the switch 2 comes anywhere near the success of the original that it cannot run contemporary games right and i'm sure nintendo very obviously wants that as well uh because coming late to the party they need to ensure that third parties can bring their games to this new hardware and if it was only say ps4 spec or something like that in that ballpark i don't think that would be enough to handle many of the upcoming games right so mm. to me this this seems like a very smart move in terms of what they're targeting as to how they're achieving that, that is something I'm a little bit more, um, I, I wouldn't say confused, but I would say it's it seems extremely ambitious, especially given the power budget they'll be working with. Uh, and I'll be curious to see what they end up clocking the system at to reach that, whether this is all feasible in battery mode. Uh, like, just how much are they promising here? But at the same time, if Epic is out there showing a demo of The Matrix Awakens, not only does it say a lot about the capabilities of this thing, but they wouldn't be showing a demo to developers if it wasn't something that couldn't be achieved on what Nintendo plans to ship, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that would make no sense if they're like, well, yeah, we can do this, but only in this offline or, or like supercharged, ultra clocked version of the hardware. You, you can't do this on the real thing. Uh, that wouldn't make any sense to me. So it does seem like they're at least potentially here to offer something well beyond what we expected and potentially something beyond say like what a series s offers right uh and a lot of this comes down to efficiencies i mean versus x86 arm is more efficient more power efficient uh nvidia's technology such as dlss they're extremely powerful we know what they're capable of they can run internally at much lower resolutions with dlss and achieve pretty reasonable image quality uh and just all the efficiency gains that NVIDIA has made since the Tagger was developed, so much has changed in this space, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not too surprised that they were able to push the hardware to a limit that it could actually handle this sort of technology. Okay. Well, I'm going to introduce some element of expectation management. Uh, oh, yeah, please. That, that will bring I, it all crashing down. But first of all, before <laughs> I do that, I, do, I would like to hear Oliver's thoughts on uh, the disclosures from these two news reports. Yeah, so I think the, the really key information is these two demos, right? 
the Breath of the Wild demo is kind of more what I think a lot of people would have expected from a Switch 2 kind of, kind of device, a Switch successor kind of device, which is to say something kind of along the lines of the, you know, quote unquote, Switch 4K rumors that I think we, you know, heard sporadically uh, thinly sourced a number of years ago, with the basic concept yeah. being that you use DLSS and a generally higher performing hardware to hit much higher res rendering in existing Switch titles. That seems all pretty par for the course. And I think what we expected, the Matrix Awakens demo is a lot more exciting and much more interesting. But I, I guess the, to, to pour a little bit of water on this already, uh, this is a hands-off, from what I understand, demo that was shown to developers and their subjective impressions in the moment might not match reality, right? There could be any number of settings downgrades. I don't expect game developers to have like an encyclopedic knowledge of what Matrix Awakens looks like on a Series X or a Series S or to, to really understand that in the moment, I wouldn't expect their subjective impressions to necessarily match reality because the Matrix Awakens demo looks fantastic even on a Series S. So who knows what ha, uh, how it actually looked in the moment on that hardware. Um, yeah. And we also do know that UE5 has fallbacks like Software Lumen and Screen Space Reflections. So again, I'm not sure about the sourcing on the ray tracing aspect of it, but we do know that this could run on hardware that um, maybe did have hardware RT capabilities, but wasn't quite fast enough or didn't have those capabilities at all potentially. So I think there are a couple things that are worth throwing in there. Well, yeah, Oliver, I, think... I, I wouldn't say that lack of hardware RT in this case would even be much of an issue, right? Software Lumen itself is very powerful. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shipped with Fortnite, right? Like just that mm -hmm. alone is is more than enough, I think, for what they're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, right. <laughs> uh, first of all, there seems to, it's quite interesting to dip into the DF Discord last night to see how the supporters are sort of <laughs> taking taking this news. And um, yeah, it was interesting that some people actually think that um, uh, that the journalists in question saw the demos. That's not true. It's all secondhand information, and that's actually quite important to stress because. You have the Chinese whispers effect. Now, on the face of it, uh, actually, I'm going to just uh, intercede with this uh, supporter question from Hobo Bench. <laughs> 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 uh, with the with the news slash rumors that Switch Two was shown behind closed doors running the Matrix UE5 demo, what would realistic specs be for it to run that? Assuming it was some sort of hybrid console, would it need to be as powerful as Series S? And this has actually been what I think has been the key reaction to uh, that I've noted amongst uh, the community which is, hey, this is doing the same things as Series S, you know, maybe it's as powerful as Series S. And um, I'm going to posit to you a scenario which is 100% plausible, which would basically demolish that argument. OK, so let's go back to the original Switch reveal. In fact, before the Switch reveal, you know, the the uh, uh, basically the trailer they put out showing how it worked and whatnot. What if there was a rumor that emerged saying, uh, well, look, you know, they've got uh, Doom 2016 running on this thing. Uh, they've got The Witcher 3 running on this thing. <laughs> Things that actually happened with the Switch hardware, right? The Switch produced pretty creditable versions of The Witcher 3 and Doom 2016. Um, however, when you actually saw them, it entirely made sense how they achieved that on that specific class of hardware. And obviously there were massive compromises and drawbacks compared to the versions running on Xbox uh, One and PlayStation 4 at the time. But if you only heard the rumor that The Witcher 3 and Doom 2016 were running on Switch, you would have an entirely different perception of the power profile of that machine, right? Just a little thought experiment Ooh, there. That's really the concept, good, Rich. The, th the yeah. concepts <laughs> that you can actually get something running in a tech demo scenario. Um, first of all, that's entirely different from the concept of shipping an actual game. But secondly, um, you're kind of comparing an experience that you're aware of with one that you have no idea of. You've just got some reports and hearsay from um, from a couple of websites here. So the concept of something being possible versus something uh, that's actually comparable to the Series S um, is, is, is two entirely different things, right? So I, I'm just going to couch uh, this with words of caution because these demos on the face of it are really, really exciting, right? I believe the uh, the the Breath of the Wild demo is uh, 4K 60 with DLSS, um, which makes it you know which is entirely plausible, right? If you could think of 
uh, the Switch 1 doing 900p at 30 frames per second. The concept of a Switch 2 doing 1080p 60 uh, with DLSS 2 upscaling to, to 4K is entirely plausible, right? Um, but that's, you know, that's one thing. The Matrix demo, there's going to need to be nips and tucks to get this working into, into a power budget. The question is whether it holds up as a, a handheld experience. I suspect it will. And secondly, um, how it looks on a big screen. Thirdly, I think there is the wild card factor of the fact that um, we are looking at entirely different graphics architectures in play here, which I think you're alluding to, John. You know, yeah. uh, the ray tracing performance of NVIDIA is a class beyond... AMD, mm-hmm. so that it's going to get the inevitably the Switch Two is going to get a leg up there, um, but yeah, that's that's really interesting. And um, Hobo Bench there <laughs> <laughs> is asking about the realistic specs. I think at this point, um, all of this is confirming the existing uh, rumors that have been circulating for I think well over a year now that the um, Switch 2 is using a processor, a Tegra variant called the T239, which is like a cut down version of the Orin T234. And yeah, there's a lot of um, leaks information about the um, about this chip, about the T239, a lot of um, sort of patch notes in Linux updates uh, that kind of hint as to how the T239 sort of shakes out. Maybe we should do a video on collating all of that information because it does paint a pretty compelling picture. But it is just the concept mm. that I find really exciting that um, uh, Nintendo actually has access to a, um, a fully modern GPU with a full DX12 feature set. And it has access to all of the engineering efforts from NVIDIA on the software side, including DLSS. I mean, they're talking about DLSS 3.5 in um, the Matrix Awakens demo that was in the VGC report. Um, Just bear in mind that frame generation is part of that, but probably won't be in Switch 2. Just doesn't really make sense, I don't think. No, I don't think it makes sense. So that's my sort of take on it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, depending on yeah. the on the cost, on the tensor cores. I guess, I Rich, that's... though, to go along with your tempered expectations, another thing to consider is that it's been almost two years since that initial Matrix Awakens demo was first yeah. released, right? And Unreal Engine itself has evolved significantly since then. Absolutely. So yeah. what they yeah. could be running on there could also be significantly more performant than what we got initially, right? So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think the question is, um, looking in broad strokes at what these demos are doing, it is basically technical demonstrations. And um, the the Zelda demo makes a really strong impression on, you know, the horsepower increases, plus the uh, the concept that DLSS is coming to a console. The Matrix Awakens uh, demo, uh, that's really interesting because, well, we've seen with like Immortals of Avium that... um, uh, Although there are fallbacks uh, that enable you to run Unreal Engine 5 pro- uh, uh, projects on much older hardware, the effort to actually make those fallbacks is just too much. There's not going to be last-gen versions of most of these new Unreal Engine 5 games. No. And obviously, third-party support is crucial to Switch 2 because it was part of the reason why Switch 1 was so successful. You know, for the first time in a long time, developers had access to a Nintendo machine that was actually capable of running third party games and looking great and playing great. So I don't think they would want to uh, not have that for the sequel. And the concept of having a proof of concept in the form of this Matrix demo uh, is actually quite compelling. It also raises an interesting point. So let's say conceivably this is less capable than Series S, right? Uh, But can offer many of the same features. Third parties want to ship on this as well as the Xbox and PlayStation 5. This could also breathe new life into the future of Series S, since we've been discussing the possibility of Series S holding back things, right? Uh, If third parties still need to ship on something like this portable next-generation Switch, that might be a positive thing for getting these games to run on Series S as well, right? Uh, it would it, it would introduce an element of scalability that would be required that would need yeah. the um, that would need the systems to be uh, much more scalable, right? I exactly. think that's obviously part of uh, of, of Epic's 
uh, sort of plan for Unreal Engine because it is heavy at the moment. Very. And um, but again, you know, the you're quite right. When the Matrix Awakens um, shipped, it was kind of dragged, kicking and screaming onto Xbox Series S. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, a, a little while later, we had Fortnite using Lumen Nanite and everything yep. virtual One year later. maps. Yeah. And it was running really nicely at 60 frames per second. That's the kind of progress that we've seen. And it's the progress that we'll continue to see as Epic continues to evolve the engine. And But yeah, just the concept of that demo running on a mobile system and tailored for that system uh, is, is pretty compelling. Uh, the other caveat I'd put on that is um, the VGC report was talking about target spec hardware which it always raises a bit of a red flag to me. But um, oh, again, yeah. it's, like it's they've in... Got some, um, uh, they've got some silicon graphics workstation in the back <laughs> there. They're running Ultra 64 or something. <laughs> That's the classic one, isn't it? Yeah. I, I remember <laughs> at the time, you know, <laughs> Ultra 64 and uh, all of the Nintendo magazines were like putting in like um, uh, uh, shots from Terminator 2. <laughs> Well, heck, or the, the PS Triple Target hardware, right? Which was uh, a far yeah. cry from what we got in the actual <laughs> PS Triple. Yeah, it had like half the graphics power, less than that. You know? No, no, no. Out. There, there was those uh, those prototype like PC based systems that like the Metal Gear Solid Four demo was running on. Right? Yeah, that's what, that's that's what I'm saying. They, I think right. they were using like uh, SLI graphics cards. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So the PS Three had less half half the yeah. power. Yeah, I thought you were mm -hmm. saying, but yes, that's exactly right. Got this question here from Ryan Luca. Uh, super interesting on the VGC stuff. It would be interesting to get the DF folks' input on which RTX card equivalent might be leveraged if DLSS is a possibility. Not sure if MX style options are still on the table, but maybe a souped up MX570 might be an option for Nintendo, as I couldn't find much on a Tegra successor. So he's, ta he's pointing us towards the MX570 here, which has about 2048. Um, CUDA cores there. Uh, the T239, um, which is widely rumoured to be the Switch uh, uh, processor, has, uh, I think it's 1586, something like or that. Or 1536, that. I believe. 1536, yes, in that yeah. ballpark. So it will be less capable than that. But um, the MX570 and also the um, RTX 2050, which is a bit of a weird one, um, those are ultra-low power um, processors that do have um, like 2048 CUDA cores, they're going to be our closest equivalents to um, uh, to the Switch GPU, but they will have much higher power budgets and um, higher clocks as a consequence. I do really want to get hold of one of these devices to see what it can do, uh, because I'm pretty sure I can limit the clocks and the power draw and get an idea of what is actually capable on that hardware. Uh, and I might do that at some point. But yeah, there's certainly a lot of um, of, of Switch 2 discussion happening. Uh, as soon as the Eurogamer report went live, you know, my, my first tweet was basically, yeah, curious to see if there's going to be any follow-up reports to that. And then we saw the VGC report basically within the hour after that. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if there's going to be anything more, but those do seem to be the two major rumours that were circulating Gamescom at the time, and they are now in the public domain. Uh, so, yeah, curious to see what we're going to be seeing going forward and also the time scale for the launch. Uh, VGC, we're talking about late 2024. I wouldn't be surprised if it was uh, sooner than that. And I think Eurogamer is, is, is hinting towards an earlier release. But I think that's everything that we've kind of got to say about those disclosures at the moment. We've got some more in the supporter Q&A section, which we'll talk about, which are not specifically related to um, uh, to, to what we saw uh, in these reports. But obviously, it's really exciting to see a new Nintendo handheld coming or, or hybrid console. I'm just curious to see what the actual Nintendo input is going to be in terms of how they're going to make it different from the prior Switch. And we've talked about this in the past, the mm -hmm. concept of the Nintendo gimmick and whether there is actually going to be one uh, for the Switch 2 or whether it's just like a continuity product, which we haven't seen for a long, long time. I bet it's uh, going to be that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there was also um, some press coverage talking about the potential for a camera on the device. I saw some oh stuff boy. about that. But I, I don't know how exciting. they integrate that. 
Well, well, <laughs> that would be maybe a downgrade from the 3DS, which had a 3D camera. So there's... Uh, yeah. Mm, I mean, you know, there could be some... <laughs> I mean, there, there could be some AR sort of style... Uh, uh, sort of applications. I don't know. We, we'll just have to wait and see. Right? Or, but that is the uh, X factor, right? We just don't know what Nintendo are bringing to the party at this point, apart from some of the best first party software in the business. I just feel like <laughs> a, a, a camera. That just seems like such a uninteresting thing to add to a game console these days, right? Well, like, yeah, you, you say that, but you know, hashtag Miyamoto magic. Yeah, can, but I don't know. They, they've they've explored this before multiple times, and it's just. I feel like we're past that part. The Wii U had a camera, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, you know, pre-Switch launch, you know. Um, no, you're right, you're right. But when the first Switch was was coming and uh, we sort of, I think it it was us and Duo Gamer that basically went public, broke cover and confirmed that Tegra X1 was going to be at the heart of it. And all hell, hell basically broke loose because people didn't think it would be powerful enough. People didn't think it would be great for a console. And Nintendo made it work, right? You know, that's that's the thing, you know. Whether that's Miyamoto Magic or not, I don't know. But, you know, basically they turned um, what was an anemic Android console into a properly decent hybrid machine, you know. That's 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 kind of what Nintendo brings to the party. The, co the concept, the kind of gimmick thing, who knows? But I can't they, wait to find they, out. They really showed the benefit of a slimline OS and uh, very optimized APIs and such, right? Yeah. Because uh, mm -hmm. Android TV or whatever they were running on those old shields, not exactly the best for gaming. No, no <laughs> not at all. Yeah, basically, NVIDIA developed the NVN um, yeah. graphics API, which is really streamlined Super way fast. to access access mm -hmm. the hardware yeah it gives you low level access to the gpu which just android didn't have it it was an absolute game changer um but yeah really interested to see what happens next and i do hope that um these reports are just the first of many i really hope that nintendo itself breaks cover with a um with a trailer by the end of the year similar to the way it, um uh, sort of debut to the original Switch. I but, could see that happening because, I mean, the Switch, the initial reveal came out of nowhere, right? They, like, just yeah. posted it one day and, like, here's a vision for what the Switch is going to be. And that was it. Yeah. yeah. And Nintendo also likes to get ahead of leaks and rumors sometimes. Like, I think they announced the 3DS well ahead of its launch, right? Just to dodge these leaks and rumors. And at this point, we're starting to get into that territory. So I wonder if yeah, maybe one random Tuesday, Nintendo will drop a slick PR video showing off some of uh, what the Switch successor will look like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Exciting times ahead, because with this coming next year and PlayStation 5 Pro, well, we're certainly going to be kept busy and uh, can't wait <laughs> oh, yeah. to see how it all shakes out.